Pastor Dan uh, to join me on stage. And um, can we thank Pastor Dan for his service to our <laughs> congregation? He is just such a, um, an invaluable member of our staff, and, and, and he oftentimes is, is at your bedside or visiting you in the hospital or waiting in a waiting room with you, you know, doing pastoral care, and we thank you, Pastor Dan, for, for doing that. And then on the staff side, he is just a consistent voice of uh, sound counsel and support, and I just so appreciate that. But a part of Pastor Dan's story that, you know, you may or may not know is that before he came to us, you know, the Lord had him in seasons of both missions work and church planting. And um, we just wanted to give him an opportunity today to, to tell his story and to share, you know, kind of what that, that process looked like. So I'll let you just kind of begin, Pastor Dan, by telling us, you know, how the Lord has used you and what that journey looked like and, uh, you know, what you would want to share with all of us to encourage us today in relation to that. Thank you. Let me, <clears throat> let me first say that it's a privilege to serve you. That's what the ministry is. It's a servant ministry. It's not a position of rank it's not a position of quote-unquote leadership. It's a position of serving. And I count it a privilege to serve you and Pastor Jerry. Um, I planted three churches, but it's, it's, it wasn't me. It was God. Um, I was just an instrument in his hand. Uh, my family was. It wasn't, it wasn't me. It was my family. So we're called as a family. We're not, it's not my ministry. It's my family. And it's always been that way. It'll always be that way. This is de deja vu for me. My first church was in a gymnasium in a grade school. And we'd set up in the morning and tear down. And then... We'd have two services back then, and we'd have to tear down at night and put it all away and start it all over next week again. And the second church I planted in Massachusetts, we met in the bar of the Elks Lodge. <laughs> you can laugh. I, I had a, a, a Pharisee come to me and tell me he couldn't come to our church because it was met in the bar, but we had three Elks standing at the end of the bar drinking coffee in the morning I looked up one, one Sunday morning, and the window where the offices were, there was a phone on a, sticking out like this, and it was, uh, I don't even know what his style was, Grand Pooh Bar or whatever it was. <laughs> and after church, I, I said, what was, what was the phone sticking out? And he goes, I called my wife because I said, these people are really Christians. Listen to this. The second or the third church was in Carpentersville, Illinois, and they had an old building, an A-frame building, and they asked me to come and start a new work in it. It was closed for at least a year and a half. It had been closed. I walked in, and I thought, who puts red and black carpet in a sanctuary? <laughs> and I walked over and looked. The black part were the dead flies. <laughs> So I vacuumed all up, and I came back the next week, and I had black and red carpets again. You see, the ducks were this full of dead flies. And the A-frame roof leaked over the first two rows of pews. All that is to say, though, that God makes a way. God speaks in your heart. He puts something in your heart. He, he plants it deep within you. And you begin to say, God, is that really you? Are you speaking to me? Really? I've always said, and I continue to say even to this day, who am I that my God should use me? Who am I that my God should use me? It's a prayer that you need to pray. Every time God was speaking to us as a family, we would 
seek out brothers and sisters in the Lord that we trusted, that we knew had a, the ability to hear from the voice of God, and we would say, "Is you, can you see us doing this? And they go, oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely, that's you. And I remember when we went to plant our first church in Minnesota that we had a choice. The district wanted us to go and take a home missions church down in New Ulm, or we could plant a church. And so we had a family prayer meeting, and Kelly, my oldest, was about 14 or 15 at that time. And after we're praying, I said, so what do you feel God speaking to you? And she said, well, in English, we were studying this poem by Robert Frost, and it's a poem about two paths that diverge in the forest. And I took the path that was least taken. She says, I think we're supposed to do the harder thing and plant a church. Teenager. Teaching my kids to hear the voice of God for themselves. I'm so incredibly blessed that God has used me in, in so many ways, but it's, it's his glory. It's him. And he is doing a greater work today. I believe this day God is pouring out a spirit in churches that will welcome him. And he's going by the churches that have given way for, lack of a better word, modus operandi, a way of doing church as opposed to being the church. We're called to be the church. Amen. And I just feel like God's speaking to people here today. God's got a call on your life. He's been speaking to you. And he wants to do more, not only in your life, but through your life. I, I'm just so blessed that God let us do so many things and travel around the world in his name with no money. but I'm rich beyond measure. Amen. So not everybody is called to, to lead the charge on planting a church, but we are all called to something. And can you just maybe kind of share how the Lord, you know, helped you step out in faith and follow his call obediently? And, and then how did the Lord, you know, meet you and help you through that? Faith has another word. It's called risk. <laughs> I remember, I, I think I've shared this in a sermon here, and God was asking us to go somewhere, to move someplace. And I said, well, God, yes, we'll do that. As soon as you open the door for a job and I can find a place for us to live. And I didn't even hardly get those words out of my mouth when God said, come on, Dan. What kind of faith does that take? People move around the world for the sake of the job. I'm going to require much more of you. You see, you have to risk. You have to exercise faith in order for God to do the next thing. He's not, he's not going to make a way now if you're not stepping out. He wants to prove himself to you. He wants to prove himself to your children. Your children aren't to have a faith that is based upon the fact that they were raised in this church. But they have a faith because they've learned to hear the voice of God for themselves, and they're obedient to that word. That's what church planning is about. It's about giving life. And bringing life where there is no life. When we went to Massachusetts, we were in their church in Minnesota, and we heard a speaker say, there are cities in New England, over 60,000 people that had no evangelical witness or even a Pentecostal witness. And the Lord grabbed my heart, grabbed Judy's heart this, at the moment. I mean, honest, as soon as he said that, we both looked at each other and we said, I think he's calling and he did. 
And we went to a place where we didn't know anybody. We went to a place where we didn't have anything. We went to a place that we still owed $900 to the moving company that had my furniture in storage and no job. But God began to open doors one at a time. And when we, we went into the Elks Lodge, that was the confirmation that God was moving in a powerful way. You see, he prepares your heart. And then he begins to give you the indicators that line up. All of a sudden, you have a desire to be someplace else. All of a sudden, you start hearing about Massachusetts from this person and that person. You start seeing Massachusetts license plates. You start seeing, you know, a vision of a church that doesn't exist. And then we always went to, like I said, people that we trusted in the Lord and just asked, do you see God doing this? And time and time again, they confirmed it. And I want to tell you today that if you are feeling God stirring something in your heart, submit it to a brother or sister in the Lord that you trust and say, does this seem like God to do this in my life? Come to, come to Pastor Jared. Come to me. Come to Pastor Marty or Pastor Patrick or any of the elders in the church or people that you trust and know you. And God will confirm what he's speaking in your heart. See, faith is risk but it's not without confirmation. It's not without confirmation. But also, I'm gonna tell you right now, if God doesn't show up, I was gonna fall flat on my face. But he never, 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 never left me or forsook me. He never left me hanging. He always made a way. You have a lot of stories of God's, you know, faithfulness in those moments, but maybe could you just share with us, you know, one way that, that God stepped in and just showed himself faithful in the middle of something that seemed impossible? Well, like I said, we arrived in Massachusetts, <coughs> and um, we didn't have the money to pay for the, the van. We didn't have a place to live. And we went out in the middle of a hurricane and looked at one house that was owned by a doctor and we told him our story and he said, I'm renting to you. Nobody else came that day, but it was the midst of a rainstorm or hurricane. And the next day, another pastor from another town called me and said, I cut a check for $900. I understand you have a need. You can't make these things up. You can't begin to dream how God is going to do it. And every time you do, you think you know how, God is going to come out of left field. <laughs> you know, but I, I want you to hear this because I think this is important. I've done a lot of studying of animal behavior and different things and and taken a lot of science courses in college. And the one thing that I have seen that God has built into creation is that healthy organisms reproduce. Healthy organisms reproduce. You see, as a church, you look, look around. Look how many people are here this morning. We have the opportunity to reproduce. We have the ability to reproduce. We have the call to reproduce. We have the anointing of a New Testament church. I shared this in the first service. I had a young couple come to my church, and he was on our worship team. He, he was a pastor. They were with us about a year, year and a half. And he came to me, he said, Pastor, he says, I feel like I'm to plant a church in the next city over. It was four or five miles from where my church met. And 
that year I prayed and I believed in God for uh, at least 100 people. We were running 55, s somewhere in that area. And when Jeff came to me and he told me this, I said, well, I have to let you go if God's put that call on your life. And I can remember sometime later, I was complaining to God. I said, Lord, we had a goal of 100 people. And he said, how many are in your church? I said, well, we're back up to about 50, 55 people. He said, how many are in Jeff's church? I said, about the same amount. He said, see, you're over 100. What are you complaining about? <laughs> That's what church planting is about. God has, has honored us in that Yes, we sold everything we owned, and we went. But he has restored everything. He restored everything. And not many of you know I have seven children, and I am seeing the hundredfold blessing poured out on my children's lives and my grandchildren's lives in, in direct proportion to that hundredfold blessing. And I cannot outgive God, and ne neither can you. Neither can you. So God is, is planting seeds today, but he's not planting just seeds to, for us to plant another church, which I believe he is doing that. But I believe he's planting seeds in some of your hearts. What's he asking you to do? What has he called you to do? You see, God has a great plan for each one of your lives. And it's a plan that has success written in it. But it's a plan that's going to call for risk and faith. Are you willing to step out in faith to what God has called you to? So would you just close in prayer and just pray that, you know, we would be an obedient, following, multiplying, growing church. Father, we just praise you today. For God, you are creator God. You're still creating new realities in this day and age. And Lord, I thank you that we have the opportunity to be a part of new creations. New creations in our lives and our family lives. Help us to walk in faith. Increase our faith. Be speaking to us, Lord. I think of Samuel's prayer, speak, Lord, for your servant listens. And I think of Isaiah's prayer, Lord, who am I that, here, who am I? Send me. Let your prayer be a prayer of faith. Dare to believe that God has something greater for you. Lord, thank you for that. I pray that you would reveal that to us. As a congregation, Lord, I thank you that you have created and, and brought forth this people. For in this day and age, Lord, we need to have a witness. We need to have a church wherein your spirit is welcome and your spirit moves. And people are not only coming to a saving knowledge of Jesus, but people are getting set free from addictive behaviors. People are being healed. People are being set free. People are being made whole. For, Lord, you are moving in power and anointing. And I pray that God as you move upon us, that, Lord, our faith will rise and we'll believe you for even greater things than these. Help us, Lord, to fulfill the Great Commission. Help us to reach out to our surrounding areas in the Midwest. For, Lord, there is a dearth of churches that believe that the power of God is for today. Help us, Lord, to make that a reality. And I pray that you would put blessing upon blessing upon blessing for those that are willing to step out in faith today. Let it begin with this church, Lord. Let it begin with us. Give us a vision, a fresh vision. Lord, a divine impartation to go and to plant churches, to see communities reached. Lord, that the people in those cities will not be like sheep without a shepherd, but that they will have a witness of Jesus Christ in their midst. And we thank you for it. 
in Jesus' name.